welcome. Welcome to SUSECon. Welcome to my talk. It's a visionary talk about automating documentation. And I guess, yes, I guess I just start because we are, it's, according to my clock, it's two minutes past half. Yeah, we're going. So welcome, I'm Markus Fallner. I'm team lead of the SUSE documentation team from Nuremberg, Germany. I'm very happy to see you here. Welcome, welcome to Washington on this wonderful day. <laughs> And I'm going to talk about OpenDoc, which is my name for a project that shall make us all work, our all work and documentation easier, I hope. Um, some of you may know me, some won't. Just a few words about me. I'm the team lead at uh, SUSE Documentation. I have been working as an open source journalist for eight years. The last seven years of that, I was deputy editor-in-chief of the German Linux magazine. And yes, I really started working with Linux in 1994, and only a few years later, I started making enterprise, making money with Linux with my know-how then. And I'm, I like to do some crazy things. I'm a conch diplomat. Some of you may know that micro republic, pretty anarchistic thing on the Florida Keys. And they awarded me a diplomat's pass, so they are on the way to be recognized as a real republic by the United Nations, and uh, happy to have a diplomat's pass from them. I don't know if that will ever bring anything or pay out for, for me, but well, I am, I am, um, uh, I, yeah, I am a minister of the Universal Life Church. It's also an American institution. It's if your religion doesn't matter. We're just believing in making things better by the use of humor, for example. I'm a GD knight because, yeah, that's something I didn't search for. You get awarded. They see that the power is strong in you. The force is there. So, and Enceladus is one of the one of Saturn's moons and one of the places in this uh, uh, in this planetary system where alien life forms might be might exist. Um, I am number four, I'm citizen number four. It's an art project. I got to know the people who run it and so I'm still waiting for their flag. They, they should, be, should have sent me the flag since quite a long time. I, I've been owning lunar property since the late 90s, which is, uh, it's every one of these things is a story of its own. Just to give you an impression that I am, no, what I'm known for. I'm known for occasionally to be running through doors. I have great ideas and I, it takes a while for me to start thinking about what possible effects they might have. So I'm, people call me quite visionary when it comes to stuff like that. And you will find me on the internet almost everywhere except for Facebook and uh, stuff like that and other proprietary stuff. Uh, you'll find me almost everywhere as M M Fiona is my name. This is my team. This is a part of my team. I said I'm the team lead of documentation at SUSE. Documentation at SUSE has a very, very high importance and a high renome. So we, are, we always have been renowned for first class documentation with our products. And when I started last year, I was happy to find a team of brilliant experts. Right now we have 15 skilled writers and PR experts in our team. Some of them are here, some new of them are here, and they are located in three countries. We are in Germany, in the Czech Republic, and in the US. And something that's not, no, not normal for this branch is I have people in my team who have been doing this job for 20 years. So the oldest team member last week had his 20th anniversary at SUSE. And guess, that's really, that's really something. That's something for the Linux world, that's something for the IT world, and that's, that's something for this world in general today, and that's awesome. You, what you see here is uh, nine of the 15 people, and that was just some weeks ago in Prague at a documentation conference that we regularly visit. And you can see me, and uh, on the bottom right is uh, Christoph. He's also here at the conference, and here's Carla Schroeder, who's uh, in my team just, just since a few days. And uh, yeah. 
15 we are on the whole. And we, what we are doing is we, are, we have four pillars for the documentation. We're doing the classical reference documentation, which you may know as the manuals, the books that were printed in former times. <clears throat> I'm sorry, my voice is a little bit low. <laughs> I've been talking for hours and hours in the last two days, so um, normally my voice is not that very wide like. <laughs> um, and I will drink occasionally. Um, we are doing SUSE Best Practices, which is a very interesting project that we started last year. Uh, it's like the old, good old how-tos reloaded. It's, uh, I'll, I'll come to that in a second. We are mentoring articles and papers for people, articles for newspapers, and lots of our colleagues have been writing articles now in the last time, in the last year, because uh, I've got PR experts in the team, and I am come from journalism, and we hired people who have been writing stuff, and it is a very, very important uh, wish for, for my colleagues and my bosses also that, that we show our expertise more than we did in maybe in the last years. And one big thing for my bosses is we, that we create innovative documentation formats, new formats that that uh, are not, we, we have to do, we, we will always do the old pillars, the classical documentation, but we are always looking for stuff that is new and uh, addresses the people's needs, the customer's needs. And we do a lot of things that, that most people aren't aware of that this is task of documentation people. We're doing the release notes. We maintain our documentation tools, workflows. We, we do packaging, packaging for our tools, packaging for the documentation itself, and we are doing the documentation for it, and, 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 and. Hmm? Translations, yeah. The whole workflow has been developed by SUSE. It is completely open source. It is integrated with GitHub. So it's, we write in docbook XML. We can use and import and export basically any language that you may want to write your stuff in if you want to contribute. If you write markup ASCII doc, that's all no problem. We can import, export that stuff into our, our needs as we need, as we want it. So the main time, or the, most of the time, our work consists of getting information, running behind developers to tell us what did you do? What has changed? Because, and I will come to that later, developers don't want to document, they want to program, among other things. So the idea of OpenDoc that I'm presenting here, in a short form first, will be, we, it, should, it should automatically spot issues in documentation, automatically find topics that need documentation, trigger documentation when stuff happens, Recognize, refine, re rate, and report issues. Offer a specialized search engine. Integrate every possible source of information. Present graphical lists that show information in a comprehensive way. And that all in one co configurable intuitive portal. That is a lot. And I assure you, it is only a vision up to now. I'm looking for a test case, a proof of, uh, uh, a test case or a project where we can, that we can take as a proof of concept. I have the people who can do that. We're looking for that right now. The, uh, it's an idea that has taken shape. I told you, I'm talking about visions. <laughs> so, and I said in, uh, in the past, one of the major tasks of documentation people was running after other people, sorting information, getting information, figuring out what are the relevant parts. So we have, some, we have had some approaches where we followed different um, goals. With, we did active doc, some of you may have heard of that, where we wanted to give the community, the open source community, the ability to, to write documentation in forms of books on their own. It wasn't that much accepted as we had hoped for, but it was an, it was an interest, interesting try. Before that, and parallel with that, we had first generation wikis. I call them first generation wikis because what I'm going to talk about is sort of the next generation. 
Um, first generation wikis, if you run the big wiki server like we do with the OpenSUSE wiki, you may know yeah, they get spammed by people. Um, they need permanent attention. They have had hard times because there's people who just put stuff in there and they simply obviously don't know what they're writing. Yeah, but as we see later, they can be modern and helpful tools. Then there's support databases, and remember the Linux how-tos, they were so great in the 90s. I don't know what I, have, what I would have done then if they hadn't been there. And I remember a, a Christmas present from one of my friends then was two CDs with, a, with downloaded collection of all the Linux how-tos. That was the, the modem days. <laughs> so he downloaded some then unimaginable hundreds of megabytes of documentation and he gave it to me and said, yeah, I know you're using Linux here. And I was like, cool. <laughs> um, the good news is we sort of, oops, we sort of reloaded them under the title of SUSE Best Practices. It's not like the old Linux how-tos itself, but it is. it has one thing in common. It, they are task-focused. So the, um, a best practice paper for is, is not only, only about a, a SUSE product. It may, for example, combine several products. It may show what a customer is doing successfully. It may show a setup and how to get to this setup, like a quick start guide to one task just like the old how-tos were. If you want to know more about the best practices, <coughs> um, there's a talk on Thursday by my colleague Christoph Wickert, one from the photo. He's talking about that on Thursday afternoon. And uh, I'll show you, I'll have them on a screenshot later as well. But still, and I told you, this is vision, visionary again, so I just took some pictures from science fiction movies. And we, we will have some, some nice and good thing to the end. But you remember this movie? Brazil. Yeah. Terry Gilliam's Brazil. And this is basically how we in documentation feel or felt lots, lots of the time of our work. And that's, and that's awesome. Everybody wants to be like that. <laughs> then we, we invented tools to work with that. And uh, when we have a look at those tools that were great in the 90s, um, <clears throat> they feel a little bit outdated and strange and alien today. You know the movie? Naked Lunch. <laughs> you know this movie? I'll lead you there. It's, hey Google, Siri, Cortana. That was Samantha. Samantha is the AI assistant in the movie Her. Ah. And uh, she's, uh, the, the movie has basically deals with the topic of alienation of people uh, because of uh, digital assistance, but she's really good at helping him in sorting out his emails. She's like, you have 80,000 emails and uh, only 128 of them contain uh, relevant content. I just moved the others to trash, okay? Something like that. So that's pretty much visionary um, information gathering for an AI. We thought that was what we thought would have, was the future, or the, the far out future some years ago, min, uh, Minority Report, it's a decade ago, I guess. Huh? That's a difficult one, I guess no one knows that. It's the movie that is called sort of the third part of Brazil the trilogy. Terry Gilliam made Brazil, then he made 12 Monkeys, and then he made the Zero Theorem. Great movie, great science fiction movie, great to watch, with Christoph uh, Waltz, you say Waltz? Waltz, in the main role, uh, without eyebrows, completely shaved, crazy, but this is, the, this is the, the UI that he has to use to solve a huge mathematical problem. So each one of these little cubes that you see, they fly around, and he has to, has to these, are, these are theorems solved by other mathematics, mathematicians, and he has to put them in the right place. And once he got all those little blocks in the right place, so he's flying through a three-dimensional space, putting this, this, this little cube in the right place to solve the theorem. The, the, well, the, typically Terry Gilliam, the, 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 uh, the deeper meaning of the theorem is that there is no meaning in life. <laughs> which he proves is not true, but that's the, that's the story of the movie. It's very complex. Great movie, but the UI is great. And another one about an AI. Um, 
I robot, yeah. People don't believe, or today it still is, seems difficult to do the intellectual and creative work of man, that man is capable of with artificial intelligence. Yes, that's, that's all future. I don't know, I don't, I'm not on either side. I don't know if it's possible or not. I know computers can, or AIs can uh, compose music and whatever. But we're not that far. So that is the Google realm. That's the Elon Musk realm. Yeah. So that's not what I'm heading for. I'm heading for something that really works. And I think, as far as I've talked with people, that this idea might really work. Um, and I, I already said, think of a portal, a portal website that has a search engine with an indexer that is grabbing URLs that you give it, webs other websites, and is passing through this, looking through this, what has happened there, and is waiting, selecting content. And it's presenting this content like a search engine does, but in a news, think of it for the beginning as a news kind of style. And uh, there's also, beside these search engines that go somewhere to search something, there might be triggers that if something happens on my site, I can trigger this portal. I can tell them, hey, just did a new version of this software or just fix the bug, fix the problem that is relevant for users, or here's the release notes or whatever. And these triggers say, hey, somewhere something relevant has happened. Yeah? And this way, they, they can also collect, refine, wait, and present in the portal. The portal might, at some point in time, get an individual configurable dashboard for users, for developers, for maintainers, for documentation people, because I think the treasure of information that we have behind that is valuable to different people, but in a different way, with a different approach. And I called it, just for the sake of the idea, OpenDoc. OpenDoc could bring, could show tasks that are just about to become problems, like things discussed on mailing lists or in forums. Could show tasks that are the regulars, that are recurring, that are coming back and back as problems over and over again, because People solve it, but they never solve, they just, they just solved it, they just did a workaround, but it wasn't solved for themselves, and so that's something that they could show. It could show outdated stuff in documentation, where people tumble over stuff that is just no longer true because we removed the package or stuff like that, and somebody forgot to mention. <laughs> It could also show new stuff that nobody understands because it's, if, they, they, if they discuss in a forum, they say, well, well, I don't understand. How does this work? I could, I could tell you several, lots of stuff about it on the Linux desktop. Oops, new stuff that nobody documented. I said that before, so. And it could find, it could find and bring the enterprise documentation and help to the people who need it. It can also find stubs, stuff that is that are simply wrong, outdated, whatever, the whole thing. And you can add more things, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, one thing I forgot to mention at the beginning, interrupt me, ask questions, I like that. I like a discussion. I forgot to say that in the beginning. And that's um, the next five slides or six slides I have as the basis of what we're talking about here. We already said, I already said, open source communities don't write documentation. Right or wrong? Huh? Partially wrong? They do write documentation? A lot? Quality? Developers want to write code, not documentation? Every open source project needs documentation. All customers of enterprise software expect and deserve high quality documentation. I think we all agree on that. Otherwise we'd be wrong here now, I guess. <laughs> um, so though good software should not need documentation, perfect, the perfect software just works and you understand it intuitively, yeah. But it's an ideal, I think. And we found out, or I think we found out in the last years that good, proper and good quality documentation is a door opener today. I don't need to tell you about 
the different ways of marketing open source software and the different ways of getting in first contact with your customers. Your customers, when you're using open source software, your customers already know what the software does. And their first contact with you is not the marketing material anymore. Their first contact with you is the documentation if they have any problem or your support, your call. So the, the software quality and having good documentation is our essential to attract new users. At the same time, we, have, we see an increased speed of development, especially in software like Tumbleweed, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, which is a rolling release. And we have a huge speed. And there is a saying, modern distributions, especially rolling release, are moving way too fast to be properly documented. Has different opinions on that. I think what I'm telling you here might be a help for that. But there's a lot of data. Maybe not like you would expect it. Or not where you would expect it. Again, and, and, we, and as we said, we don't have yet the, the Google, the hell 2000, this is 2001, you know? Yeah? We don't have yet the omniscient superpower AI that just finds and spots it. But we have lots of resources. We have so many resources and so many documentation and stuff. We have, this, we have the SUSE enterprise documentation that my team does. Here's also the SUSE best practices, for example. Up there's the release notes. We have the, this is the SUSE best practices website with security modules, enterprise, public cloud infrastructure, setup guide, advanced patch lifecycle management. Yeah? So that's stuff that we have. That these, these things are how to like case driven. We have OpenSUSE documentation. We have the portal for documentation for OpenSUSE. We have the wiki of OpenSUSE. We have the mailing lists, of, mailing lists for, SUSE, for OpenSUSE. A huge treasure grove of, of information. And we have the OpenSUSE forums. We have the SUSE forums. Oh, I, by the way, I took, I don't know if you know the browser Vivaldi. I just took the screenshots with the browser Vivaldi. I, didn't know it was existing in that good quality already. And they seem to work. So if it looks a little bit different once you go back to that side, maybe tell me, but I think it worked quite well. So we have the SUSE forums. It's also a lot of information. We have the SUSE support center with its knowledge base and all the knowledge that the, the SUSE support people have that they have when they fix problems over and over again for people. And all those, all those pages, all, they all have FAQs. <laughs> yeah? We have the SUSE Customer Center, so if you're a customer, you can go there and get information. We have the open SUSE release nodes. We have the SUSE release nodes. And directly connected to the release nodes is this open SUSE build service that builds the software and has a lot of information. I don't know how many of you get the, the daily or so every, yeah, I think it's twice a day or twice, uh, several times a week anyhow, mail from the OpenSUSE build service about telling you how many packages he has changed, upgraded, and whatever. If you're using Tumbleweed, you may have a gigabyte of new software per week on updates. That's, that's, that's quite normal because it's automated and it gets its stuff. So it has a lot of information about new stuff, what has been touched, what has been changed, and it gets, its, it gets most of its stuff directly from GitHub. And that's what you see here is the documentation, uh, the branch of uh, the, the high availability documentation that my team member Tanya is just working on for slash 12 SP2, SP2, or has been working on, I must say. And we have a lot of information in there. We have every com Git commit has, has the, the chance of in the comment to, sp to, to tell somebody this might be uh, need, needed for documentation. Or put, a, put in a, a hashtag in there. That, so there's so many potential service sources. But that's not even all. That's just, that's just the biggest part of what we have. But there's even more because with GitHub, and, uh, and you have the first step outside of the SUSE world, yeah? You have, 
you have wikis from other distributions, you have lots and lots of websites from projects, and there's a lot. So we have lots of information. We said community, here's the bare facts, the five facts again. Community and documentation are a difficult couple. We have a lot of information. It's about finding and presenting them. That's the core thing at this point of time. And software is changing faster than anybody can document. And we can do better. Because nothing is written in stone. And as we said, modern software is going too fast to be documented. I don't believe that. I, I do believe that there is a similar, a similar path as we have been going on in the last years with open build service and open QA and other stuff for documentation. And that's why I'm introducing the idea of open doc. Do you know open QA? Okay, the... Hmm? Yeah, I'm sorry. Autocorrect. Um, who of you are familiar a little bit with the build service? What it is, what it does? Okay, the whole thing is the OpenSUSE build service is a centralized build farm replacement so that you can develop your software there, throw your sources in, and in the end you get RPMs or binaries for a variety of platforms. I know that's wrong in that short form as I say it, but it, I think it will work for explaining it. Um, but that's not all. It, it, you, get, you get RPMs, you get binaries from the software you're developing, and build service can also fetch the stuff from GitHub, from, uh, from Git automatically, get, get the sources, spot when there is a change, build automatically. It will, there is an infrastructure behind it that will automatically make ISO images for complete distribution. They will be booted in a virtual machine and with KVM, and they, then OpenQA, Quality Assurance Tool, will run and will test if the machine boots successfully, for example. And this system, this whole landscape, has been developed over the last years and is so sophisticated and so far now by the OpenSUSE community that they even test, for example, if in this image Thunderbird is starting up and if, they, if you can add an uh, email account and send an email and stuff like that. So it's very, very, it's very far. It's automatic build, automatic um, building a distribution, automatic quality testing, and automatic monitoring of the sources. Huh? So when in earlier times, the software development in the last decades, that was like you have your own build server and when you, when you have your sources ready, you build them and then you test it. Today, Richard Brown, my, my, my colleague and the chairman of the board of OpenSUSE, he always says our release managers would be angry if they had more than 30 minutes from, from the, a commit to a full build. <laughs> And uh, it's, it's all done by a central server. And OpenQA was invented to make quality testing automate, automated. So not to have always click the same button. In order to have a graphical tool who can also test graphical uh, um, desktops and automa automatize the tedious talk, task of um, quality assurance. The build service, yeah? Hear that? It's an awesome tool, and it's really, it's used at a high scale, high frequency at SUSE. So OpenQA was invented to automize, automatize the, the tedious task of quality testing. The build service was invented and arranged in order to, to get rid of the, 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 the task of having a build farm for each and every distribution platform and whatever uh, in every place. So we have that centralized as a service and internally as a service for a, for a company who builds distributions. Well, Linux in itself was invented to be able to scratch an itch. And open source was invented to, to be able to, to, to solve your own problem. And that was in early last year, we had a knowledge management workshop for the documentation team in Nuremberg. And 
to get, we sat together with the trainer for lunch, and then we had, the, had an idea. What if we could, he was amazed, he, didn't, he hadn't heard about the build service, about OpenQA and all of that, which is honestly one of the, the whole infrastructure that I just described with the rolling release tumbleweed falling out of this infrastructure. So it's part of it. But this, this whole block was one of the main reasons why I quit my job as a journalist and started at SUSE because I saw this is one of the most innovative things happening in, in open source technologies over the last years, if not decade. So the trainer was amazed by the automa automatic functions that we have there and on what high level they are. And so we, we talked about it and he said, how, how, couldn't we, how can we do something like that for documentation? And then we talked about it and the outcome was sort of this statement. What if we could use automated triggers to collect information, changes and news on, for example, OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, refine and paste them into a modern dynamic, somewhat semantic portal. It's not another new tool, not just, not just another new tool. It's a, it's a portal and you can attach anything, any one of your tools to it. That's very important. It's, it's like, it, it's, it will have, a, probably if it really will, becomes that what I think of, then it will have a sort of an API that you can attach your trigger to and it's not, you don't need to make any changes, just, just dump in your data and so, that the portal is just a, is, is a presentation layer for other tools, for many other tools. It's open, of course. The portal includes an indexing, weighting differentiating search engine, it's crawler search, any helpful new websites. That's up to there, that's just like any other modern search engine, any indexing search server. Yeah? But on top of it, I want to have triggers that you can induce your data into it if something happens. And they act like agents and feed the open doc portal. They may be created by community partners, developers, whatever. And the portal, and that's also a very important thing, the portal shows a list. I put the list in inverted commas because it's not a real list. It's a modern kind of a representation of a visual, visual representation of a list. Um, and it shows a list of recent changes, problems, questions asked, or topics highly discussed or relevant or just add yours. I have some examples for that. As I said, the list is not a list. Tag clouds are also lists. Uh, do you know tag clouds? I'll show you one. Or tables comparing the KDE programs, packages, uh, issues, tasks, mailing lists against the, the GNOME versions so that you can spark people and telling them, hey, you're responsible for KDE, you should do more work. See, you're always in red. The gnomies have all in green already. And the information is always already there. It's just about presenting it. So I got some, some pictures to show you how I think, well, some websites or some projects are doing very, very good in, 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 in presenting complex things in, in simple graphics. How many of you know the movie series Alien? Yeah, there's five movies. Four ones and then the fifth one is before the first one. Yeah, so we have a, so the, here is basically the first Alien movie. I don't know if you're familiar with the plot, but even if you're not familiar with the plot, you can see the alien life forms here in which movie they appeared, so you get a glimpse of the plot of every one of the movies of Alien and what happened where. So for those who remember the movies, you have the Alien movie, you have the face huggers, or these are the, the, the eggs that are in the, in the Alien vessel. Um, you have the face huggers, the face huggers go to a man, plant their egg inside them. This one is the chest burster, I think it's called, chest breaker, chest burster and that becomes the, the uh, original alien. Huh? And uh, in the second one, we had the alien queen who lays the eggs added to the whole concept in the second movie. And so the whole, this is, there's many pictures like that on the internet. And I think it's pretty good in explaining a very complex uh, concept in, in just one picture. This is a tag cloud. This is a tag cloud that says, okay, on this website, 
these topics have been discussed, and the bigger a topic is listed, the more intense or the, or the more often it has been discussed. So if you are the maintainer of this website, you see that your people have a clear interest in Web 2.0. The elder ones will remember. <laughs> this is also a tech cloud, but this is a tech cloud about the writings of a science fiction author. I leave it up to you if you think this is successful. <laughs> It's very confusing in the beginning, but you can, you, can, you can already see that this author probably likes to write about debatable space, hellship, and whoever Nicole Peeler is. I don't know, but he writes a lot about her. So what they did is take the writings of this author, collect all the stuff, and then make, just make the stuff bigger that appears more often. That's a simple, a simple evaluation thing. But a better example for the tech cloud is on Science Fiction Fandom's website. It's, it's here, I have it in big as well. These are the 31 most used thread tags on this portal. So that's not only a marketing tool or a tool for the website maintainers, that's something that we can also make use of. This is what our customers discuss, this is what our customers need, this is where issues are, this is where problems are. We have tools like that already, and when I say we, I mean the, the, the fantastic OpenSUSE community, like here, WebLate or L10N, DE, OpenSUSE DE, OpenSUSE org. <coughs> Sorry. What you see here is a list of, Douglas, correct me if I'm wrong, but these are um, projects that need translation. Everything, Every bar, this is a bar chart, and the data from that, I think, comes directly from build service or from the translation projects back. Yes. Yes. And that means ICEVM, for example, third line, 83% have been translated. Then the yellow thing, the yellow mark is, I think, is in progress, and the red one is there are issues, there are problems. And that's, the tech cloud is, it has been used too much in, in internet and whatever, but it's also a quick representation of, of um, uh, activity. This is a more refined way, an even more refined way of that, and I really like this project. Okay. It pulls directly from Git, he says. Some of you may know the website Stack Overflow. What's the time saying? Oh, I'm good. Yeah, Stack the real internet argumentation? The, the real internet argumentation? Yeah. Documentation. Documentation, yeah, right. Why is that? Be yeah, it's, it's because they have lots of, uh, I'm sorry, lots of things happening with this, everything that you write there Gets, may get tagged, evaluated, shifted up and down in the list, yeah? and at the end, at the end of the day, you'll have the items that are the most interesting or the most controversial or the most something to someone on top of the list. And that's that's basically all. So I just I just went to Stack Overflow and searched for Linux. I got 134,000 questions that were tagged with something like Linux or whatever. Yeah. And Reddit works, has things that work the same. There's a SUSE subreddit at Reddit, and what you can see here is you have this trending arrow, so this is going up, this is, this is becoming more important, this is going down, this is less important to people, we have numbers, this is that much important, this is about that and that and that, and that's, that's what I call the weighted list. Yeah? Um, does company make you making use of stuff like that? Yeah, you all know TripAdvisor and others. They have a lot of data behind it, a lot of data in very very dispersed places. Yeah, and they are using the input from the people. Well, they are fa they are pretending to use only the input from the people in the way they present their stuff. <laughs> if you pay more, you get more representation. But but nevertheless, they have a 
They have the ratings, and they, have, and they were very successful with that. There's also a weighted list. Others like Yelp, they, 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 again, they, they pretend to use the knowledge of the crowd or of the locals to tell you which uh, deliver, pizza delivery service is the best. Like, is that a good one, New Yorker's Pizza in Nuremberg? I don't know, I have never eaten from them. I, I was surprised to see that they are named the best one. But, well, yeah, and it's Nuremberg, no. <laughs> um, and you may remember Google Alerts. You know Google Alerts? If you want all the new news about SUSE, add a Google Alert to your Google Alert website, add your email address, and Google will send you automatically news when news pop up on Google News on that topic. So this is the preview. I have a Google Alert. It's a website and an email. So if I add this alert, I did that last night, so I would have got the, the news from my former employer that the SUSECon has started. And you can get automatic information via email or in your portal on the topic that you define. So this is like, like a trigger, or this is also like this, this site. And of course, Google News itself is like, works like that. Distributed information in a lot of places, refine it, present it. What Google does is it knows you, it knows me, it knows everybody, and waits and, and orders the list by that. But there's also more innovative stuff that's like, I guess nobody has heard about Wikidata game. My friend and the, the knowledge management trainer that was in this training with us, he's from the Wiki uh, Data Foundation and from Wikimedia, from the Wikimedia Foundation and uh, highly involved in the, in the Wikipedia. And they started gamification. So they made up games, so hunt down the errors in Wikipedia. <laughs> and it's, it's gamed, it's, it is games. For example, um, find the right places or whatever that are wrong. And they say it's quite, it's quite, it's working quite well. I don't know if we can do that, but that's, that's, that's again future, but the other stuff already exists. So that's how, that's all just stuff that could be in that portal. I don't know about gamification, I'm not a fan of that, but all the rest that you saw, these lists, these representations, would make it easy to see the issues that we, that the customers, the users have. The triggers, so that was, that's all stuff that can be done by search engines up to now. The triggers, again, they pour in stuff. Yeah? Do you know from which movie that is? Huh? That's from Existence. Cronenberg, science fiction movie about reality distortion and where they, they are in a 3D virtual reality game. And he's, in, in the middle of the game, he's forced to use the the bones of the lizard that he's eating, the bones of the fried lizard, to, <laughs> to, to build a gun and shoot his, uh, the, the person that's sitting on the other side of the table because that's the story of the game and they are inside the game. And that's the gun that he's building. So he's, it's, it's an amazing scene, he's building, he's taking the, the bones and builds a gun out of it. But the triggers are, why, why, why do I have this here? But just to show you that the triggers are also, they may be completely different than you think, they may be much more. I said they are any agent that feeds data in, like in OpenQA, the tests, the tests that, that, are, that they use in OpenQA, they are open source, so you can write your own quality assurance test, not only for SUSE distributions, for all distributions that the, the build service is providing, so for all distributions, and uh, so it's open source, so you can do anything. Because, you know, because it's specified, there's a specification, and as the alerts, these alerts may send you an email. That's a kind of a trigger. You, I tell Google, hey Google, tell me when there's something new about SUSE. And then I get an email, my phone will beep, hey, conference started. The triggers can also qualify informations from the huge haystack. The haystack and the information and all this is done by people who know what they do, but it's, 
what you want, is that what you personally want is somewhere in there. And that is, the qualification of that is something that you can automize, automatize from the people who know where the information is, where the good information is. <laughs> I'm, this is like, like Yelp, they present only stuff or they pretend to present only stuff that comes from people who know where the good pizza is. The source for a trigger, and now I'm giving you five to ten examples what, what triggers could be. I think I, done, I did, but a mailing list thread, but not, not just because it's long. If there's just two guys and they're discussing about stuff, you, you know those guys, who, they're, they're, just discuss, they're discussing for months and months and months without finding a solution or, or whatever, just probably because they just don't meet in public. <laughs> um, so you have, uh, the qualification in this case would be a mailing list thread that has more than 20 emails and more than four or five different people out of which at least four are not known as trolls, for example. As I, as I said before, the stand, maybe the standard email from Open Build Service telling you and me about the recent changes in Tumbleweed. But what about a, a demon monitoring a social network discussions about a topic? Could also be possible. A hashtag and a commit command could cause a trigger so that something appears in the portal on your dashboard, on somebody's dashboard, or on a search as, an, as a result higher up than other things. Same with a keyword in release notes, a special topic or a keyword in a mailing list or a forum a thread. So for example, if you're searching for GNOME, then forum threads or mailing list entries or whatever that have no, that, that are about GNOME might appear. We can have predefined entities in documentation. So we have, we are using DocBook XML, but also other uh, uh, styles like, like ASCII doc support entities like in HTML. So you can have uh, keywords, hidden keywords in the text that say this, this paragraph is about that and that topic. And so it might, this paragraph might show up in a search for that higher in the, in the results. Also the standard Google query might be a trigger or an RSS feed agent, or a monitoring demons notification, telling you that this damn open VPN process has been hanging every day this week. So that, that might be also some software problem related to it. And that's so much more because it's open. I'm almost done. This is going into details, into technical details, and this uh, was contributed by Richard Heigl, the, uh, the knowledge management trainer. And he said, we have the triggers. We can do automatic collection. I only have 10 minutes left, so I think I just go th through the titles. We have automatic collection. No, I'll do it. <laughs> we have automatic collection. We can have triggers for new posts, and we can automatically update the metadata. We have cognitive, we can do cognitive classification. All of that stuff is stuff that is related to, to Wikimedia, what they do, how they classify their stuff that they have, and how they, how they uh, juggle it. Um, we have cognitive classification, like attribution, like saying this post belongs to, or this topic belongs to that over there, so it's a, uh, like a direct line between the two. And that's similar like mapping, where we have links, dependencies, or oh, there are similar pages over there, we can put that in there. Oh, you, you were looking for GNOME, uh, would you also like to know more about blah, blah, blah? Huh? And that's all through the metadata. Huh? And they have a lot of, a lot of, of knowledge about that. Um, but they also can, we can also enrich the content by detect, when, if you detect missing stuff, like uh, a screenshot that is missing because of a, because of a failure, or because somebody forgot it or whatever, or because people say there's one missing, huh? or um, because, for example, OpenQA detected, because that's the way how it works. It takes screenshots and compares screenshots, so that's one of the ways how it works. It takes screenshots and compares them to prefabricated screenshots. If they are not the same, something's wrong. So we could do, for example, 
screenshots from the documentation and see if the real systems really behave like that. And if they, if they don't match, that could be an issue and that could be a trigger. So there's lots and lots of stuff that could be done. And generate diagrams like we had with the web light, with the translation stuff. And well, videos and attachments, okay, that's OpenQA does that, for example. You can have a video of an successful installation or, an, or see the video of an installation that is running uh, because it's just, it takes screenshots every few seconds or every second. And in the end, you have a video of one minute or 30 showing the whole installation process and you can see what went wrong. So that's also, that can also be generated automatically. OpenDoc can make proposals, can tell you, okay, why don't you hear that that might be or whatever. It can do automatic qualification, correction and stuff. Um, you can have the, 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 like the Google Alerts or the RSS feed, the stay informed aspect. And what, the, what was very important for, for my colleague Richard also is that Wikipedia has the, the versioning system. So if um, you can make rollbacks, you can make uh, edits visible and, um, yeah, and, and, and enable rollbacks in the whole system that might in documentation or in, in output formats and so and that's um, from the list that is presented from the whole bunch of information that you get presented the system could automatically remove those that are too old outdated or that you haven't touched for 20 days because uh, that's, uh, that's, it's like that that's how we work today we only have the possibility of doing that stuff that, we, that is important and urgent. Sometimes we manage some urgent stuff and some important stuff, but the, the not important, not urgent stuff will always drop off the table. And that's cognitive deletions. You can create, you can create deletion lists for stuff. Okay, I can't handle that. Let's move that aside and don't present it to me anymore. That's also possible. Um, but it's, as I said before, we, we, we're not yet talking about all that great stuff of uh, artificial intelligence, big data, and other stuff. But that could be attached to that without a problem, I think. Because we're talking about triggers on the one side and the presentation level on the other side. And we're not yet talking about machine learning and neural networks and others. It's still a question of the people who work on it. So, what do we get out of this? Bavarian single malt whiskey? Yes, that's Bavarian single malt whiskey and it's great. Imagine an automatic and human distillery, automatic and human distillery, creating, gathering, refining all this information. Might, get, might be something very tasty, concentrated, but very tasty, and worth a lot <laughs> in the end. The list in the portal allows and encourages users to rate, mark, kick, tag. To rate, this is good, this is helpful, this is outdated. Yeah? Outdated would be mark, yeah? this is relevant, this is irrelevant. Yeah? Oh, I don't want to read that. This is outdated. Get away with it. Yeah? Or just tag. Oh, this might interest my, my colleagues from the GNOME team as well. Oops. Stuff that's rated higher will move up. I, I already said most of this. Only important thing about this side, slide is um, what's it good for? Who is it good for? Documentation writers, for example. We could easily find out what's wrong, working bad, good, ugly about our documentation or about a project or about a product. Hardware release managers, developers could find out what's, again, what's working, what's wrong, what's working, what's good, bad, ugly about the product and project. Maybe, maybe find some things before the, they, they cause problems at a customer because other people who have tested it ran into that problem. Might be. You could, as I hope, you could do that with the individual dashboards where a release manager will have something different to read and some different information than a documentation guy. 
and integrate analytics, like the comparison of projects or tasks like we had in WebLate. And if we can do that, the OpenSUSE, the, the, the OpenSUSE, the SUSE documentation project is ready to invest time and resources there. I'm ready to fight for these time and resources. And uh, we would, we thought of a, a special kind of gardener who separates, you said the wheat from the chaff. So don't worry, we would help. Do you know that movie? No? <laughs> Delicatessen. Jeanne Caro French movie. Uh, it's also, it's not science fiction, but it's a dystopian future and uh, there's dystopian future, right? He's, the, he's not a gardener in effect, he's a butcher and uh, he's, he's uh, just preparing to, to prepare some meat. <laughs> he's crazy. No, we're talking about wheat and chaff, so this is something relaxing for the end. Um, the state is, I am looking for ideas for projects to create a proof of concept. My colleague and friend from the Wikipedia world, they know how to do it. They say uh, the technology behind it is not magic. We have the search engines, we have, the, we have wikis, modern wikis can do exactly that. The front end is just a representation. There's many websites who already use wikis to do representation or to do ent in enterprise to, to show monitoring data and stuff. And uh, so that's, yeah, that's the current state. That's an idea, that's a vision. I think that would help us a lot because that's what taking um, most of our time, gathering information. And yeah, I think I made it exactly in time. We have some minutes too for your questions. Did I fill you up completely? My name's in there and the, the, is it? You can write an email to me, ask me. I'll be happy to follow up on this. It's been growing since April. I, be, I have presented that at OpenSUSE conference at the OpenSUSE uh, people, and that. The, but the, the most feedback that I got up to now is is really from from within SUSE and from from many of my colleagues who have the same issue that we have lots of information in different places. And I've been telling about this idea at the Write the Docs conference in Prague where there's lots and lots of open source people and enterprise software people from all over the world and all over the branches concerned about documentation. And they all say they have the same issues. That's most of the work, most of the time, most of the work is not writing or editing. Most of the time is really collecting. It's kicking ass of developers. I need that. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>